Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering the differences between coarction of aorta and aortic stenosis. Now, um, if you have not been following, please go back and watch my other videos on the other cardiac congenital disorders. I'm starting first with the acyanotic disorders, and then I'm going to move on to the cyanotic disorders. You absolutely must know the difference between the two. If you're currently taking peds, when you get to cardiac, you, I promise you, you're at least going to have one question on this. So you have to definitely know the difference. Now, before we get started, guys, please don't forget to like this video. Do it now so you don't forget. Put in the comment section anything that you'd like to see me cover or you'd like to see more of. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And my YouTube live, my very first live that I'm going to be doing on YouTube, where I'm going to be covering priority and delegation, it's going to be tomorrow, August. What is tomorrow? August the 20th. I should know that. That's the day before my birthday. August 21st at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you guys catch that YouTube live as well. All right, guys. So let's get started. Let's start with coarction of aorta. Now, as you can see, look at what's circled here because this is where the problem is. Look at um, the aorta, right? And oxygenated blood is supposed to be going through here to go to the upper body, to the brain to perfuse all those organs and then it's here's the lower part that's supposed to go to the lower part of, part of the body the lower extremities right but look at what's happening here you see how that uh, part of the artery is very very narrow that means decreased blood flow is going to where the lower extremities so let's take a look at what's happening description so it's a localized narrowing you can see that right here look how narrow it got it's a localized narrowing uh, near the insertion of the ductus arteriosus, which results in increased pressure proximal to the defect. So here is the narrowing, right? So you're going to see, uh, excuse me, you're going to see increased pressure right here. So we already know one of the signs and symptoms this patient is going to be manifesting is what? Hypertension. Let's keep looking. We see increased pressure proximal to the defect, head and upper extremities, and decreased pressure distal to the obstruction. So the pressure here is going to be what? Lower. Why? Because that's low, that's less oxygenated blood that's going to the lower parts of the extremities. Look at the pathophysiology. Let me make this a little bigger for you guys. Pathophysiology, the effect of the narrowing within the aorta is increased pressure proximal to the defect. Again, guys, there's a reason that the author is repeating this information. They said it in the description and now they're telling you again. So where we see this narrowing, um, near that narrowing, we're going to see increased pressure and distal to that narrowing, the oxygenated blood that's going to the lower extremity, we're going to see decreased pressure. The effect of a narrowing within the aorta is increased pressure proximal to the defect, upper extremities, and decreased pressure distal, lower extremities. Clinical manifestations. The patient may have high blood pressure, bounding pulses in the arms, upper extremity, and weak or absent femoral pulses. Where, would, where are you gonna find your femoral pulse? Lower in the body, guys. Cooler lower extremities with lower blood pressure. Why? Again, take a look. Here is the narrowing. And yes, you are going to have less oxygenated blood going to those lower extremities. So we expect to see um, a lower blood pressure. We expect to see cooler um, lower extremities. What brings warmth? When you touch a person's skin, and what makes that their skin feel warm? The blood flow. Look, remember, less blood flow to the lower extremities. So instead of being nice and warm, they're going to be cool. That's why, guys, it all makes sense. There are signs and symptoms in, of heart failure in infants, and that's why up here also, guys, and that's with both coaction of the aorta and aortic stenos um, stenosis, patients acyanotic, you should not expect to see them turning blue, but you do expect to see symptoms of heart failure. You have to know that for both of them. In infants with critical coarction, the hemodynamic condition may deteriorate rapidly. That means that patient can go down on you very fast with severe acidosis and hypotension. Mechanical ventilation and inotropic support are often necessary 
before surgery. Notice how it said before surgery. So we expect that patient to get surgery. We're going to talk about that in a second. Older children can experience dizziness, headaches, fainting, and epitaxis, that's the nosebleeds, resulting from hypertension. Patients are at risk Patients are at risk for hypertension, ruptured aorta, and reason for ruptured aorta, guys, that's because of that increased pressure. Aortic aneurysm, um, aortic aneurysm is a weakness of that aortic vessel because of the increased pressure and stroke. Surgical treatment, surgical repair. Surgical repair is the treatment of choice for infants younger than six months of age and for patients with long segment stenosis or complex anatomy. It may be performed for all patients with coarction. What's the non-surgical approach? Balloon angioplasty. Balloon angioplasty is being performed as primary intervention for coaction of aorta in older infants and children. And that is your coaction of aorta in a nutshell, what you guys need to know. Now let's move on to aortic stenosis. What's the problem here? Right here, guys. So this is the left atrium, left ventricle. And here, remember, guys, um, this is oxygenated blood. This is blood that has already gone to the lungs. It's picked up oxygen. It's going through the left um, atrium, left ventricle to go into the aorta to go to the body, right? But look at this narrowing. This is aortic stenosis. So take a look. What's the description? It's a narrowing or stricture of the aortic valve because this is where the narrow is happening right here in the aortic valve where that oxygenated blood is supposed to be going through that aortic valve, then out through the aorta to go to the rest of the body. Clinical manifestations, newborns with critical um, aortic stenosis are going to show signs of decreased cardiac output. And that makes sense. I'm going to go back up, take a look again, oxygenated blood that is supposed to be going through the aortic valve to go out through the aorta to go to the body, look, it's narrowed. So that means less oxygenated blood is going to be going out to the tissues. It makes sense, guys. Newborns with critical aortic stenosis demonstrate signs of decreased cardiac output with faint pulses. Those pulses aren't going to be strong. Hypotension, decreased blood pressure. Tachycardia. Why do you think tachycardia? The heart is trying to compensate. Because remember, it's oxygenated blood that's supposed to be perfusing and feeding these tissues. That oxygenated blood is not getting out to those tissues the way it's supposed to because, again, of this narrowing. So the heart rate speeds up, trying to compensate to push out more oxygenated blood. So we also see tachycardia and poor feeding. Why poor feeding? Think about it. It takes energy to feed feet. It takes energy to eat. That's why even adults who have respiratory disorders, right? You have to give them rest periods before and after they eat because it takes energy. It takes oxygen to eat. Just eating that simple act, that is a job. That is a work on the body within itself. Okay. It demands oxygen. Children show um, signs of exercise intolerance. Let me stop there. Why would they show signs of exercise intolerance? Well, um, the more you exercise, doesn't your body demand more oxygen? Of course. This patient already doesn't have enough of that oxygen because, let's go back to the picture of this narrowing. Oxygenated blood is supposed to be pushing through here to go to the body, but because it's narrowed, less of that oxygenated blood is getting to the body. So you think they're going to be able to tolerate exercise? Of course not. They're already not getting enough oxygenated blood. So they're going to have ex exercise intolerance. They're going to have chest pain. Why? The heart is screaming out for oxygen. They're going to have dizziness when standing for a long period of time. A systolic ejection murmur may or may not be present. Surgical treatment, balloon dilation. Balloon dilation in the card, uh, catheterization laboratory is the first live procedure. That is the first, um, the first thing you expect to be done surgically for the patient with aortic stenosis. That is the first choice. Balloon dilation. Prognosis. Aortic valve replacement. Well, actually, before I go, let me continue with the surgical treatment. As I said, balloon dilation, that's the first choice. Newborns with critical aortic stenosis and small left-sided structures 
uh, may undergo stage one Norwood procedure. Honestly, guys, I haven't seen too many questions asking about that uh, stage one Norwood procedure. Really, what I see them asking about is the treatment of choice, which you need to know is balloon dilation. But I'm not your instructor. I don't write your exam. So make sure you know it just in case. Now let's move on to prognosis. Prognosis, AR, aortic valve replacement offers a good treatment option and may lead to normalization of the left ventricle size and function. Again, please do not forget, guys, both of these disorders, patient's going to be acyanotic. We don't see them turning blue, but we do see symptoms of heart failure, okay? That goes for your coarction of aorta and your aortic stenosis. And guys, that's it for this video. Let me know what you thought about this video. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And don't forget to catch my live on YouTube tomorrow, August 21st, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.